smile too. Us. Greetings, everyone. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Stig, Frederick from Sweden. Good to see you. Mike Lorden from Florida. Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming. Us. Paul from Germany. Rochelle from Canada. Good to see you. Tigre. Good on you. This will be a fun session. Torbjörn. Us. Daniel. Us. Okay, so today we want to continue on with what we did just as a – and you all remember my good buddy Josh. He's going to join me again today. Um, so just to a very quick, short review on what we did with the grips. All we did was we played a game, gyaku te, gyaku te, reverse hand. It literally just means grappling. In other styles it's called gaki, kaki, sometimes called chinna, um, Different, different words for the same thing, right? But it's just a fundamental principle. We work on the idea of two on one here, two on one there. How do I get that? Give me one sec. I'm just going to plug it. So how do I get that two on one? Well, he just gives it to me. There. Maybe I knock it down. There. Maybe I knock it down here. So we've got the two on one here. Two on one here. Two on one elbow control. Two on one underneath elbow control. Two on one Russian tie. What I love about a lot of these is it does lock into a lot of wrist locks. So we're here with the Russian tie, but we can also work on the wrist lock, work this wrist lock, come along there like that, even work here, there, yeah. or here. There, or even here, there. Okay, so with this one here, this is a really nice wrist lock. As he starts to bend out of it, the more he bends his elbow, the more it hurts him. See that? So this is a very strong lock as well. Okay, and he's going red in the face. Okay, so we're working from one, two, three, underneath, four, undrag, five, two on one, six, but you could probably get wrist locks with all of those. See this one, just bend straight back. Two, here. That's a kotegaishi. Three, there. Pull the arm in. Boom, it just kills. Okay, so I don't want to get too much into wrist locks today. We can worry about that another day. And uh, to be quite honest, um, it can be a little tricky. But once you get the principles, not so bad. Uh, Daniel, good on you. Raj, namaste, all the way from uh, Nepal. Sensei Claudio, good to see you, man. And Gaza, fantastic. Okay, so we just have those fundamental grips, plus we add the collar tie and the underhook. See that? So from a, a, the principle of, of range four, moving from range one, where he throws the kick, boom. Range two, two, he throws the punches. Oh, maybe I'll come in here. Range three, I'm coming in with my headbutt elbow, or he comes in with the headbutt and elbow. Boom, I'm going to cover straight up. Bang, hit back, and then move into range four, control, arm drag, or control the grip, look for other things. Okay? Now, today, what we're going to do is we bridge that gap. We're in here. He's, he's, he's crazy, man. He's throwing punches. Where's the safest place to be? And look, what I want to really emphasize today is the whole body of knowledge in range four and five is the specialty, and that alone uh, is the specialty of certain fighting arts, especially wrestling. Well, you know how competitive wrestling is. Guys will do everything they can to win that gold medal in the Olympics. And it has an incredible history. So I'm not trying to cover the entire range of techniques for wrestling. There's probably, well, according to Rico Ciparelli, one of my wrestling coaches, he said there's probably 30 to 35,000 basics because one technique becomes a different technique when the angle changes. Okay? So I don't want to cover that. And don't please don't... Uh, mistake what I'm doing for my suggestion that I know more about this stuff than wrestling. What I do know a little bit about is 
taking that range from the stand-up fighter as a Kyokushin fighter, how can I deal with the dangers of range two, three, four, and down five? That's what we're dealing with. And we need to begin to grow a fundamental body of knowledge in all the different ranges. Okay. Um, so our 30 basics in Kyokushin really deals with range one and two. We know that. We need to move in. We do a little bit of range three with the elbows. We need to then move in from there. Well, it's a little bit of both, Tigre, because uh, the Greco-Roman cross. The Greco-Roman is particularly good with the collar ties and underhooks, uh, with the two-on-one arm drags. That's all Greco-Roman. Um, that's all found in Greco-Roman. But some of the techniques I'll be doing uh, may include. Uh, um, freestyle as well okay so what we need to do is begin to build a fundamental body of knowledge in the ranges and what I'm going to do today is just show you uh, three or four fundamental techniques of how to take someone down to the ground with control and understand what control means and then once you get to the ground maintain control so one of the big things that uh, has happened uh, in the last 20-odd or 30 years or so, 25 years, is that as a result of USC, we see fights, we see guys fighting off their back. And they're quite talented. And because Hoist Gracie, who won the first couple of UFCs, was fighting off his back, everybody thinks that fighting uh, off the back is a viable option. Well, it's only a viable, viable option when you have a referee and a certain range of rules. It's definitely not as viable, you know, to a good fighter, anything's viable. It's definitely not as viable in a realistic situation because of one thing, gravity. The man on top has an unfair advantage. It's him plus gravity versus you. So the first rule that we need to think about always is get on top, stay on top. Don't even think about getting on the bottom. So when we say control, we don't mean bottom control. There's a whole body of beautiful techniques. Let me show you, for example, fighting from the bottom. So I can be here like this, and I'll even use that same grip. Look, two-on-one grip, elbow control. I can come in, push-pull, kiki. I was talking to my wife before. This concept of push-pull that we use um, is oshi hiki komi, oshi, Japanese for push, hiki, pull, komi means to, you know, like it's a, it's a word extension for to join them. So oshi hiki komi. So I want to work the idea of push, pull. So I pull the arm, push my leg, pull him in. Now remember, leverage is simply changing angle to optimize more of my body against less of his. Okay? So watch what I do. As I push with my foot, I pull with my arm, and I'm fighting essentially underneath here. That's what I want you to understand. So there is very viable, simple, realistic possibilities. And what I do is, as I push pull, I come in here. You can cross your feet if you want, but good practice. Matty Tesla taught us good practice. You should be able to push pull here too. You get the tap even with crossing without crossing your feet. We could do that then. We call this a running man. Then when you cross your feet, the tap goes on instantly. And if I really want to consolidate the angle, look, I'm right at 90 degrees. Good. Now, if he gets caught in this sort of thing, first thing he does is grab my gear over here, and he has to undo that angle. So it means he just starts to move around to his right. Well, well look, now the angle goes, look. I squeeze as much as I want. It's uncomfortable, but it's not going to cause him to tap. Then he keeps going even more, 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 more. Now I'm in trouble. Okay? So fighting from the bottom is viable and realistic if you know what you're do, doing and you have a referee. But underneath that, on cement, footpath, uh, bitumen, you don't want to be on the bottom because all he needs to do, even when he's neck is caught in that triangle is lift you up a little bit 
boom, and let gravity do the work. It's him plus gravity versus me. He's going to win. He's got the entire gravity of the universe. So the first principle is even though there is a whole body of knowledge underneath, we're not going to work with that. Your mindset should be as a stand-up fighter, stay on top all the time. So everything we do today is designed to maintain top control. The next thing you need to do is think about safety. What's safe, what's not? Where have I got to have my head to be safe? Well, we know that the head is dangerous in range one and two, kick and punch range, even range three because of elbows and head butts. It gets safer the closer you move in. There's an old saying, one foot in front of the blade, you're in hell. Two foot forward, you're in heaven again. That's an old Japanese saying. Okay, so we need to learn to bridge the gap and move in. Are there techniques? There's probably dozens. Do you need to know them? No. What you need to understand is the principle of moving in, not the actual, actual techniques of moving in. The principle is cover, cover, get my head on the chest. So let's just quickly show you what I mean by that. So we're here, let me turn this around a little bit. We're here like this, okay? So I want, to, I want to remember that I'm in danger here for the punches. So I need to be conscious of that. I'm in punch range, my hands are always up. And if it gets overwhelming, and trust me as Kyrgyzstan guys, when you're not used to punches coming to your head, it will get overwhelming. If I was fighting a Kyrgyzstan guy and I knew he didn't know anything about punches, all I'd be doing is I'd be going bah, 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 around the head because he'd be going, oh, what's going on? Okay, so you have to be prepared for that shock, all right? I mean, it's universal. You've, you've got to, in a, in a real situation, you have to be prepared for the shock that goes bang and grabs you by the groin. The guy that grabs you by the throat, pokes you in the eye. That's shocking as much as it is physically debilitating, okay? So we need to... Remember that at the end of his punch range, I'm in trouble. So I have to be a little bit conscious. Moving around. Boom. Bang. Covering. I like to catch guys' hands on the tip of my elbow so it hurts. Okay? But at some stage there, bang. I'm starting to come in now. And where's the best place for my head to be? Right there on his chest. I can headbutt from here. I can headbutt up. Sorry about that. I can come in here. I have a collar tie. The only danger now... Is perhaps a knee, but as long as I keep his weight on that leg, it's very hard for him to kick me with the knee there. It's hard for him to kick when you've got his weight on. And the punch, all I have to do is block that punch. See that? So now I'm in a relatively safe position. So the first principle you have to think about, don't worry about techniques. Think of principles. One of the best ways you can train is let your students have a principle and then let them play with that principle. So let's move back here, it's a little more light, I think. So I'm here, I'm out of range, I'm in danger, boom, boom. You know, the best boxers in the world get hit. So we want to cover. Our objective is not to win the boxing match against the boxer. Our objective is to go to the range where the boxer is uncomfortable. Boom, boom, headbutts, in close. Where's the danger? I put my hand around his arm, a body, and I lean on that way. See now he lifts that leg up? He can't lift it up. See that? So I'm using my shoulder. Now he's got this punch, and all I do is I just capture that punch in the crook of his elbow or on his forearm. And here's the beautiful thing. As he throws that punch again, look, this hand comes through. Now I'm safe from there. And if I want, I go bang, 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 bang. Like that. There's not a lot he can do. And I can start to catch that knee and hook and he falls down. Okay, so the first principle, and ask questions, I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it as, as we go. But the first principle is protect yourself on the way in from range two, three, and four. Kicks, punches, head butts, elbows. The safest place to be in that respect is right there with your head on the chest, okay? So that's the first dilemma we, we face. How do I avoid getting hit? Okay, now, there are styles of martial arts that work in circles. 
bang, they'll come in circles like this, okay? So if you move in a certain way like you're punching boxes, it, it won't work. So he's throwing a nice left right, boom, boom. He's throwing punches at me like a boxer. I'm just moving around. I'm going, ah, oh, this is easy. And then I throw them at him, boom, boom. He taps them down, okay? Then all of a sudden I start doing this. Well, I'm not even doing anything. I'm just hitting ridge hand, knife hand, back fist, cock hand. Oops, sorry, <laughs> ridge hand. It's really hard to block, except for one thing. When I do that again, I'm really going to try and get your head off. When I do that again, I want you to put your head right on my chest. All of a sudden, that momentum that I'm developing with the circular motion gets me in trouble because as I hit him, now I'm in trouble, okay? So the principle of getting out of range one, two, three, into range four with your head right on the chest works very well for a wide, wide range of possibilities. And like I said, you know, there are guys out there whose whole life is aimed at winning an Olympic wrestling uh, gold medal and it's not going to be so easy to get your head on their chest. We're not dealing with those people. We're dealing with the general populace and we're dealing with people who are trained in range one and two stand-up Chogoshin fighters, okay? So that's the dilemma we have to deal with is how do we bridge that gap into range four safely, all right? So we'll do a little bit on that, concepts on that, not techniques, concepts. And then what we're going to do is... is uh, Remember that um, I'm thinking as I go here. Remember that when you get into range four with your head on the chest, uh, the main thing you have to watch out for is that knee and arm. So then it becomes a matter of how do I get the weight on the leg that kicks, how do I control the arm that punches? Okay, downward strikes, Harry, pretty well that wouldn't work. Um, for a downward strike to work, his head has to be much lower. And there, boom. If, if his head is pushing in here, I could probably get it, but you don't get – it's too close for an elbow point. You might get the tricep, but it's just too close. I need his head a little bit away, then you can do it. Um, a proper head position neutralizes that. And I'll show you exactly why. Good question, Harry, to bring this leg. And as I come in here, remember, my goal is to bridge the gap and get in safely. Remember, we've talked about this. We go in or we go out. I'm here. I want to bridge in. So I do the us like that. So he faces me, us. And then my head staples there. Where does it go? I'm looking at his shoulder. I'm concentrating on getting my head in the middle of his to hit my head with an elbow. I don't even have to block it. Hit me with an elbow. Good. Go on, hit me properly. It's like it feels like my two-year-old son jumping on my head. There's zero effect because your elbows are range three. Here, the only danger may be that he tries to pound down on top of you, okay? So just like, bang. And trust me, in the 0 0.5 seconds that you hang around here with your head there, that is not going to happen, okay? And I'll show you why in a sec, because if he, is, if he is occupied with trying to keep his balance because you're doing the push-pull principle properly, He's not even going to be thinking about hitting your top of the head. All he's thinking about is how do I keep my balance for crying out loud? And by that I mean this. Look, I come in, I have my head on his chest, but I have the leg, okay? So I, he needs to, as soon as I have his leg, that means, see here, I have his leg. I'm in this position. I'm pulling, pushing. Today's theme, once again, push-pull. Oshi hikikomi, oshi hikikomi, push-pull principle. Whenever I pull, I want to push, and look what happens. So keep your balance. 
Can't punch me in the head. It's really <laughs> it's hard to punch people in the head when your priority is not to land on your head on the cement pavement right there. Okay? So everything has to be taken into context as well. To that, I hope that kind of answers that for you. Um, uh, Harry, a good question, though. Um, the other thing you need to remember is, is as you do it, you don't want to... You know, oh, thanks, Rochelle. You, you don't want to get too involved in presenting your back. So I'm going to show you three techniques, three simple takedown techniques. A couple of them can give you the impression that I'm presenting my back. And by presenting my back, it means I'm here, he takes my back, he gets control, he starts to choke me. He puts on a rear naked. <clears throat> I don't want to be in that position, okay? Once again, I come in, I want to get a nice throw, but in the, oh, I've gone, whoops, I've given him my back, I'm trying to get this off, he sneaks a good rear naked in, and even as I try and get it, I'm not going to have much luck, okay? So don't present your back, but if you do present your back, you do it in a way that his position and power and, and, and balance is compromised. Okay, so the first scenario we want to look at is a lot of it depends on his foot. So we'll, we'll do it on this side. He has his right foot forward, uh, left foot forward. The first one is when my foot is also forward, so it's almost toe-to-toe, -to -toe, okay? This first technique can work against a reasonable novice if my feet are ob opposite, but it, it's quite difficult because to make that work, I've got to literally step forward and step back. The angle you need requires our feet to be touch-touch like that. So if we're sparring around, what I might do at some stage is just switch my feet. So we're moving. Boom, bang, the spine boom. And I'll look for that opportunity to switch feet, okay? As soon as I switch feet, my head now, and I just put that down so you can see the feet, I need my foot mirroring. I don't want opposite feet. Left and left, I want left and right, okay? From there, I could be left, left, because that's where I'm starting. I don't know what he's doing. He's throwing the punches. I'm waiting for the opportunity. And there's my opportunity, I switch feet. As soon as that opportunity presents itself, I create the opening and kill the opening with my head. Swap things. So he puts that foot forward now, so, so you can see. Give me a sec. I just see the light's not that good where we are, so I'm just going to move this light. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, so now our feet up, his right foot's forward, so my left foot goes forward. So watch what I do. I simply, maybe an opportunity comes when he throws a punch. Boom, I slip the punch, keep coming forward, my head goes to his chest, and I look up at his shoulder. I have to look at the shoulder because that maintains the integrity of the power chain from the sacrum to the top of the head. If I look down to my head here, he simply pushes my head down and I can't resist it. If I look up at his shoulder, he pushes my head down. Now he has to fight the entire body, not just the head. Look at the difference. Push hard, push hard, push hard. Now watch what happens when I drop my head. Keep pushing. I drop my head and I have no resistance. First technique, feet are opposites. They're like that. I wait for the opening, punch might come, I slip, head in. You can just practice that in the dojo. Slip, head in. Slip, head in. My foot goes to the outside of his foot. I just drop that. Well, actually, we'll just move back a bit. Okay, so we're here. Boom, bang, he throws a punch, boom, I slip. See, my foot goes to the outside of his leg. It's that simple. It doesn't take any thought whatsoever. I'm simply going, boom, there like that. Now, as I'm doing this, my hand is on my leg, just so I get used to the fact that I have to drop my hand from here down to here. I don't want to do it after. It's too late. So what I do is I drop it there straight away. Okay? I look up 
at his shoulder. I look up at the kanji mark. We've got T-shirts on today too, as you can see. Normally, it's a we don't allow T-shirts underneath gis in the dojo unless they're under uh, 10 years old. But we've got T-shirts on because we're going to do some T-shirt stuff a little later too. Okay, so we're here. Punch comes. Boom. I time it. That's all I do. Maybe he wants to swing a big, yeah, knife hand or something like that. Boom. Exactly the same thing happens. Okay, then I, tr I progress. I've done that. 20, 30, 40 times, head goes, and the hand that's on the knee now goes around the back of his leg. So now I'm here. Boom. See that? My hand came through his leg. And I connect to my hand, but I make sure the back hand is on top. Another important principle. If my front hand is on top, he grabs my arm, pulls it off. Pull, not push, pull. Just pull, pull it up. Boom. See, like that. Pull it up. Okay, I'm trying to take you down. Don't let me. Boom, just pulls it up. Come on, you can do it. Ah, he pulls it up. Okay, now I put my bottom hand on top, whether it's this grip, Gable grip, Gene LaBelle grip, any grip you want. The top, bottom hand's on, back hand's on top. Now he pulls my arm up. It's not going anywhere. Okay? So we progress from head with my hand on my thigh, head with my hand on his thigh. Head, my hand connected. Now, what I'm doing is I push, pull, turn the circle. So I push with my head, pull with my arm, start to turn a circle, and he goes down. Okay, I'm just going to check the messages whilst I'm here. Nothing new, good. Is this coming through okay? Everybody, you can hear me all right, can you? I'll just double check that you're getting it I'd hate to think that I've been talking to myself for the last 10 minutes. <clears throat> it's coming through okay, is it? Give me a thumbs. Yep, beautiful. Okay, that's all I need to know. <clears throat> okay, so progression. Technique one, single leg. Go the other side if you want. Most people, 70% of people have their left leg forward. I might have my left foot leg forward. For this to work, I need to create an opportunity where I switch. It's not hard to do. Maybe I'll kick, step back, oh, stepping out of range as he comes in. I just step forward. Okay? Here, throws the punches at me, boom, and I come in here. See that? Head on his chest, arm around his leg, connected to my hand. There. And what I do is I keep my posture strong. I'm looking up at his head, uh, shoulder, and I simply pull and push. As I turn the circle, and he goes down. Okay. The next principle we want to work is how can I control him once I get down? Okay. I have a choice. I've taken him to the ground. Do I want to stay there or do I want to run? Get the heck out of there if it's a uh, if it's a dangerous situation. Don't hang around. Okay. Otherwise, you need to go down and be in control in top position. The easiest way to do that is drill the habit of maintaining control of his leg. So watch him. Bring this leg forward so we want to see. So we're here now. I've come in. Okay, and don't. I've, I've done seminars where guys have gone, yeah, but he just punch you if you bring your head in like that. I know. All right, we've addressed that. Don't worry about that. Sometimes you forget things so that you can drill the principle. Okay, so I know he can punch me. So what do I do? Do I spend all day working on how to, you know, don't worry about it. He throws the punch, bang, I come in. I just get my head there. Even if you get glanced, I bring my head right in here. Principle two, arm around the leg. Principle three, grab my own front hand. I don't grab my back hand. I grab, excuse me, my front hand. Principle four, now watch what I do when I take him to the ground. I keep going down, control his leg. See that? I have control of his leg. And I keep going down so that I stay on top. All right? So to do it properly now. Yeah, we're there. Punch comes in. Boom. I come in here. Take him down. I still have control of the leg, notice. I'm not going to let that leg get between me. That's a really valuable principle. Don't let go of the leg until I have control. 
You see how see my knees on the ground? No, you don't, because they're not. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, trick question. I don't want my knees on the ground. So how is that pressure? It's not. It's not comfortable. Put my knees. How is it now? Yeah. How is it now? Very comfortable. Okay. How is it now? No. Not comfortable. So. The principle is I want my weight on him, not on the ground. So it means I lift my knees off the ground. I have a tripod. I don't want my legs narrow. I don't want them parallel. I have them here. Okay? So the first control principle is get on top, stay on top. And you have to be a little mobile when you do that. So don't fall into the trap of trying to do. Your goal is pressure. Okay, PC, you've got to be politically correct. Pressure and control, that's the real PC. Pressure, control, okay. Pressure should be gravity doing it for you. Control is maintaining top position. So we go down once again. He throws the punch, I come in underneath. Head, arm, connect, push, pull, pull my hand, push my head, turn the circle. Go down, finish, here, pressure. Okay, let's turn around. So we're in this position now. There are a number of positions. Arm under the head, arm under the arm, arm across the face. Catch his arm, we call this a VW because it looks like a VW logo. All the way from your country, pal. There's the VW, we call this the VW. Okay? But the... The move, and so he tries to get out now. He gets out, he, he does ball, creates space, keeps moving his hips. Boom, boom, don't pull your guard, just get the heck out of there. Boom, bang, and he's got away. Because my objective wasn't observed. My objective is not just pressure, it's pressure and control. So now when he tries to get out, all I do is go, all I do is adjust, micro adjustments. All I'm doing, look, just make it really hard for him to adjust all the time. I'm taking my weight off as much as I can because of the pressure, okay? But his movement is initiated from his hips. Come back a bit. So watch when he tries to get out. Watch. Look, first thing to move is his hips, okay? So here's a secret, and this is a really good secret, and you get – you get wrestlers as well as BJJ guys, well, you'll catch them off guard with this because generally speaking, we like the concept of chest to chest. Okay, so a whole body of knowledge is built up on how to escape pressure from chest to chest. But from my experience, the hips are what moves. When we stand up, we talk about the power coming from the hara, the tanden, speed comes from the chest. But there's no speed on the ground anymore. He can't move with the lightning speed that he can when he's standing on his feet. And that's fast, fast movement comes from the chest. Okay? So here's my principle. And I've been experimenting with it for a few weeks and Josh will smile because when I work with Josh, he's younger and stronger, so he can work hard to get out of these positions. But now what I do is I go from chest to chest. Now I'm on his belly, so now I'm controlling his hara with my hara. Hara to hara. <laughs> Good principle. Okay, so now when he tries to get out, can't move his hips anymore. Okay, so for a karate guy, don't try to go chest on chest, pressure, cross face, all these things are good. Okay, for a karate guy, what I want you to do is move down, put your belly button on his belly button and spread your legs into a tripod. Now he tries to get out. Really hard. It's really hard. It increases the difficulty by three or four times just by moving from his chest to his belly buttons. Okay, very important principle of control. So once again, So I'll often, when we teach, I'll often ask my students to teach me. So what's the first thing I have to be aware of, Josh? The punching. 
Yeah, so I've got to be aware of the punches. I want to set up for a single. Yes. So what have I got to make sure happens? What did he do? What did you do there? He switched legs. Okay, nice and loud. He switched yes. his legs. Okay, head goes. Good. On chest. Yep, keep going. Tell me what else you're doing. Leg on, leg on, um, arm under your thigh. Yep. And then uh, bottom on top hand. Yep, so back hand. Yes. On back hand. Holds the front hand. Good. Yes. Good. Now where's your eyes looking? To your, um, to your shoulder. He's looking up because now if I want to push his head, it's harder. Okay, if he looks down, his head just, his whole body goes down. Okay. Then the principle we're after is what? Push pull. Push pull. So what do you push with? Like head to your, on your chest. Yeah, but what do you pull with? Um, my arms on your legs. Good. And then how do you take me down? Turn the circle. So he turns, there you go. So now he does all that. Boom, boom, boom. And he keeps pulling down, controls my leg, and ends up on the side, on top. And every time I try to move to get out, he just adjusts. Okay? Good. Just. Now, of course, there's lots of ways to get out of that. That's not what we're dealing with today. We're dealing with the principle of being on top. So if I'm crazy and wild and he gets me down and he ends up on top, and he, he calculates that his best option is to get out of there and run, well, then that's all he needs to do. He needs to come to his knees, boom, and he can even put one knee on my belly as he does it, bang, and then he's out of there, okay, by maintaining top position, all right? So it's vital that you remember off the single leg takedown, you have to maintain top position. Hey, Paddy. Oh, it's good to see you, man. Hi, Lennox. How are you, buddy? Good luck in training today. I heard you're doing a good job helping dad. Hara means stomach or abdomen, right? Yeah, hara means, yeah, it means the, the gut area, the core area, if you like. It's interesting the English word has started to use core. Some people don't like it. I don't mind it because it... It describes simply the whole hara area. And I think the reason I don't mind it is because of the word hara, because hara translates well to core. It's not just the gut. It's not just the viscera. It's also that whole concept of the center of power and strength in the body. Okay? So we have the, the single leg. Let me just run through. If you're taking notes, once again, first principle is I have to mind the punches and elbows coming in. So I mind the punches and elbows coming in, protect, head on chest, okay? The next principle is as I do that, even as I do that, I want to make sure my legs are mirrored. His left, my right. His right, my left, okay? It's really important you get that part. It, it can still work against someone who's not really familiar with it, but I, the main reason is it just takes too long. For my hand to go from back here all the way to there and step in is much longer. You watch if I'll do it about the same speed. So, and zero, one, two, three. What did I say? That's what happens, by the way. They step out. That's why it takes him. So I'm just going to step in, get in the position. Zero, one, two, three. Okay? So the count of three. And with the leg forward, zero, one. You're there. So you can see the difference. It's, it's three times faster to get there if your legs are mirrored. Okay, put that leg forward. So we're here. I've got to watch out for those things. Bang. Come in here. Head on chest looking at shoulder. Arm behind. Back hand holds front. Circle with push-pull. Take down, control. Tripod. I can go under head, chest to chest. I like to go belly to belly. See that? And that's all I do is I practice just with my toes on the ground and my belly on his foot. That's all I'm doing. So he moves. This is how I grill, getting a feel of the balance. Unpleasant for him, great for me. I feel like I'm on a surfboard. But this will help you. Two things. One, it'll help you to keep your bait weight centered. Two, it'll remind you to breathe because if I do this and don't breathe, I'll start to... <sighs> so I have to breathe. So every time he moves, I breathe. 
So I'm breathing like that. Okay? That's the first principle. Now, from here, I want to look at a second control point, and that is my knee riding his belly. Okay? So funnily enough, some people call this knee on belly. That describes it all. So I'm here. I'm here. What I'm going to do now, bring my hands here on his shoulder, on the ground, jump up with my knee on his belly. I can punch if I really want to. I can brace soak if I really want to. Okay, it's hard for him to punch me because I'm out of range, but I can drop down to his range anytime I want. Okay, a lot of pressure there. It's not comfortable, is it? Say the alphabet. Uh, it's hard for him to say the alphabet because of the pressure. Okay, and I'm being nice. This is kind of low on his abdomen. If I wanted to be a son of a gun, I'd put it right on the tip of his solar plexus. Now say the alphabet. He can't. Okay? And the pressure increases as the angle increases. Look, right now my hip is at 90 degrees. He says the alphabet. A, B, C, D. Okay, nice and loud. And listen to the alphabet as I increase the angle from 90 to 180. Loud. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, 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 Not very good. And then he's got a shirt on. I'm just going to grab his gear and pull it up. Uh, yeah. <coughs> okay. So that's the second control position. You simply pop up like this. We're here. Knee on chest, on belly. Okay. Don't pop up. Lie down again. This. Don't pop up with the knee close to him. Pop up with the knee low. I don't want to pop up with the knee high because if I do that, it just pushes my knee. Boom, and he has my back and chokes me. Bang. Okay? So we don't want to do that. So any questions about that? That's the first entry into a simple takedown. What we're doing... There probably is 50,000 takedowns, maybe 5 million. I have told myself 5 million times to stop exaggerating. But there's lots of takedowns. For us as karate guys, we don't need to know them all. Remember, the principle is understand the possible positions and just have a handful of defenses, a handful of attacks in each of those. Okay. It's really important, as you can see, you have to train with the objective of no injury and train with the objective of agreement with your partner. It's not very nice if you have a partner. It's not very nice if you have a partner uh, who is in no in he's completely unprepared and all of a sudden you're putting your knee on his belly and pressure and, you know, they'll never come back. So you find a partner that you have agreement with. So that's the first simple principle for a Kyokushin person to learn how to take someone down is simply push, pull, pull the leg, push the head, turn a circle and land on top. Don't land on the bottom. Don't land between his legs. Just land on tops. And the reason I control his legs like that is so I don't land between the legs. Let me show you what happens when you do that. If you land on his le on between his legs, now you can be in trouble. Okay? So... Um, Josh is going to take me down to the ground. Boom, bang. Boom, comes in, takes me down. Boom. And I have pulled him in between my legs. Okay, posture up. Boom, bang, 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 bang. Okay. He's got to fight a lot. Posture up. Whoa! Pull him back down again. Use my knees. Connect my knees and hands. Okay, pull his head down. Punch, punch, punch. Okay, yeah, get his head. He needs to get it. Whoa, next thing you know, I'm getting his arm. Next thing you know, I'm getting an armbar. So there's a lot of horrible things can happen to you if you land between his legs. Now watch what happens when Josh takes me down but doesn't get between my legs. Boom. He comes around me now. Look, now he puts pressure on me. Flatten me out. Good. Now I have to work. Do I punch him? I can punch him. Is he going to work? He just controls my arm. Now I can't punch him anymore. Okay? Try to get him off. Yeah. Okay? So, rule number one. Land on top. Stay on top. 
Okay, that's two rules. Rule number one, land on top. Rule number two, stay on top. Don't let them get you off. Okay, so that's the first simple entry into range four, transition into range five, a nice single leg takedown. Very simple. If it's done correctly, it can be confusing. There's probably numerous permutations off that, and particularly when, for example, if I start to take him down, but he resists it, okay, so everything works against a compliant opponent, and it goes from zero non-compliance to 100% non-compliance, and every step of the way has more and more permutations. Okay, so you watch again now. I'll do it this side so we can see. As I go to take Josh down now, he fights it. He, he's not going to – okay, so now I have to work out what I can do. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll pin his leg between my legs and capture his far arm, uh, far leg. That forces him down. But other times maybe I'll be here and I'll turn a sharper circle. I'll pull and turn. Let me pull him down, other leg forward. Okay, so I accelerated the circle. Sometimes you can come here and lift up here, and then we go one, two, and then sweeping down that way. Okay, so of course there are very permutations to that, but get the principle right first. We'll work on those permutations in time. Um, the second takedown I want to show you, I want to show you two more simply because they're very safe. And to train these, you need safety. You can make them hard, but ideally you want them to be safe with a safe partner. Okay, so the next one that we're doing is very safe because you can control the velocity that you take them down. And that one comes off a collar tie. So this time, instead of putting my head on the chest, I come in, clear his arms, and come in with a collar tie. So watching... So we're in this position. He throws the punches, boom, boom. I come in, I clear my path. Or as he throws the punches, I come in here and, and, and clear the path. And then what I do is I slide up with a collar tie. Okay? Like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to step through and stick my butt half out. Now we're going to do this so you can see I'm going to turn in this direction. I don't want to turn so that my butt is square to his butt. I want to turn so that it's his leg, my leg, his leg, my leg. What I mean by that is if I turn so we're square, you see our legs are in line. So it's his leg and my leg, his leg and my leg. I don't want that. What I want is his leg, my leg, his leg, my leg. So if we look from the front now, you see, his leg, my leg, his leg, my leg. You look from the back and you see one of my butt cheeks hanging out the side. If I'm here and I do the throw, so let me throw you, you'll just swing around. You have no control over the angle. But if I stick my butt cheek out so it's his leg, my leg, his leg, my leg, now when I throw, he falls. Okay, so this is probably what I think anyway is the simplest throw that you can do for a stand-up fighter. It's safe, it gets you in, it controls, and provided you control the momentum as you go down, you remain in a safe position. So to control the momentum, you start doing it quite slowly. So we're here like this, I come in, collar tie. I can turn, look, I have control of his hand here too, by the way. And remember, if you control the hand, always try to control the fingertips. Because look, I have wrist locks, wrist locks, wrist locks, wrist locks. Lots of wrist locks. We'll do a whole section on wrist locks um, another time. Oh, bang. Collar tie. Now watch what I do with my leg. I'm going to step all the way through and hit him with my butt. There. See what, what's happened is? So his feet... Are roughly that angle, my feet are that angle. So I come here and I turn all the way to there. 
Okay, now, to do it with control, I simply go down on my knee and pull him with me. Then I end up in Kesa Gatame, scarf hold. I can pull in here. A lot of things you can do. There's a thousand different ways. You can, you can tap him another 150 different ways. You can control him. If I just, my good buddy, uh, Mick Jones, police officer, he's the one that had to hold a man in this position for an hour and a quarter in a remote town in Queensland for someone to come and help. And congratulations, Mick. His daughter, Jess, who was one of my students, who, as a karate girl, fought in an Anogi a BJJ contest and won gold medal, tapped everyone. Um, she got engaged a couple of days ago. So good on you, Jess, for thinking of it. Okay, so I can be in this position. I can control his arm. I can come up here, control that arm, and now I have complete control of the situation. Right now I'm trying to keep my weight off him because Josh is my friend. I don't want to – but in reality, you can control and see his head comes up because of the increase in pressure. Okay, so breathe now. Harder, right? So I put my butt on the ground just to help him off, but I can still punch, still gray stoke down, elbows, anything I want. If I want, I can grab his gi and choke as well. And there's nothing you can do because I have this arm trapped and this arm trapped. So I choke him, watch. Stop the choke. Okay, so that's a very safe position. And this throw will allow you to take that position. So once again, watch. We're here. My primary danger is the entry point from range one to two to four. So I need to bridge that gap carefully. Once I'm in that gap, then everything is much safer. So I'm here. I come in, collar tie. Straight away, I keep transitioning through to that angle. See, Josh is facing there, I'm facing there about 45 degrees further. Now, if I didn't like him, I simply drop my weight and then throw him, end up with a knee ride and punch his lights out. But Josh is my friend. So I'm going to come through here and then I just drop my weight to my knee and I finish with my arm around his head, holding my thigh and most importantly, Controlling this elbow. This is Kessa. Right? And like I said, I've got my bum on the ground because there's so much pressure. But if you do it properly, I mean, you can tap guys in this position the pressure. Okay? See, Josh's breathing stopped. Okay? And it's just a matter of time. Okay? And the reason you need this elbow say a strong is because if I'm here and I don't have control of that elbow, all he does is rips that elbow to the ground, and now I'm in trouble because he keeps coming, takes my back, and the next thing you know, well, I'm being choked, puts his hooks in, gets control, everything like that. You know, yeah, finish it, well, back. He gets me all the way back here, which is next thing you know, all of a sudden, I've gone from being on top in control to being not very good control. So now I've got to... Look into his dairy eyes and get up from there. That's a really good principle, by the way. If you've been choked from behind, you're never going to pull the arms off. It's extremely difficult. What you need to do, this is a, a tangent, but it's worth talking about. His arm that's choking me, generally speaking, we're taught to look away towards the hand because it reduces the strength of the choke. But I work the idea of looking in. So I push his elbow, drop my level and look up at his eyes. And now he has no more choke. Yes. Okay, if I can get that arm off, I can simply come up and I'm in a much safer position. Okay, so once again, the flow of this technique from this side this time. Reach the gap safely. Collar tie. You don't have to go collar tie, by the way. I've done this a couple of times to guys where I actually do like a really heavy duty forearm jolt right on their neck. So I'll come in here and I'll go like that. And it nearly knocks them out. Where your shot puts your arm through, you see Josh's head, how it shocks from a forearm. I'm not punching him, I'm just simply shooting my arm through. Okay, so you can do that too. Not very nice, is it? Yeah, not like that. 
Josh is about to punch me here. He hates me now. He used to love me. He hates me now. So one, two. See that? I keep going all the way through until my butt cheek sticks out, and then I throw him, take him to the ground. That's the second one. That's a nice headlock throw. There and throw. Remember, push, pull. I'm going to pull with my arm, push with my butt. So you've got to have my knees bent, and then I straighten my legs. Bang. And this arm, see my finger here pointing. You go towards the finger. One, two. I keep going towards that finger. You take it to the ground. If you want to stay standing up, you can. Okay. Now that requires a simple step through. So I hope you're still with me. I hope this is making sense and you're getting something of it. That requires a simple step through. I come in. I'll do it this way this time. Collar, step through. And this foot steps across. Okay. And then I pull, pull, and take him down. Now I'll show you one that doesn't require a step through. You simply rotate your body in the position that you're in. The setup is virtually exactly the same. And I really like this one because uh, you can control the velocity of the takedown as much as you want. You can simply smash them to the ground or you can simply let them down like they're a little baby being put to sleep. Okay, so once again, we're here. Control his arms, control his neck. And what I do is I don't rotate my feet this time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to make sure there. Watch my feet. Oh, let me move back. Here, punch comes perhaps. I cover, collar, step. You can do it with the step. That's the idea, oh, the idea of this is without the step. But watch, I don't move my feet now. For the headlock one, I have to move in to there. This one, I simply keep my feet where they are and I rotate to the ground. I start here and I simply keep my feet where they are and I rotate to the ground. So watch what happens and how well I can control it. Collar, head, and then look. I simply keep my feet where they are and I spiral him to the ground. And it's very, very effective. Once again, you end up in Kessa and you can put a lot of pressure on it, okay? So this one is very simple because you don't even have to worry about a step. I have my feet mirrored, come in, holler, or simply pull him or push him as he pulls back, pushes back in. I push, he pulls it, pushes, I push him, he pushes back. So if I push it back, what are you gonna do? Yeah, he's gonna push in, push back, push in. Push back as he pushes in. I simply rotate through. I spiral to the ground. I literally go and spiral to the ground. And what stops me falling over is his body, of course. So once again, very simple. The primary key is don't get hit on the way in. If you can get past being hit there, oh, oh, chain, elbow, headbutt, come in. Look, I have my hand right on the bicep. I push him. He pushes back, but simply spiral all the way to the ground. Okay? That's called a spiral. Back down. That's if my foot is here. What if my foot is here? What if I got my opposite feet forward? Well, you can go that way. Or I find that even with that leg forward now, the spiral still works. So I've come in, bridge. I haven't switched my feet. I've simply covered... I come in here, but I hit straight over the shot put and take him down again. Okay, so it still works both ways, but you need to experiment with one or the other to work on which one you prefer. When you get your logbooks, there's a space. I've got a logbook here. There's a space in the back for you to work, to drill your techniques. That's uh, very important. Don't know if I remember judo correct. Is that neck hip throw called Koshi Guruma? Well, you could be right, Frederick. I've never done judo in my life, but I think Koshi Guruma may be here. So you start here, and I think 
Koshi Guruma, the hand goes underneath. Or oh, that, yeah, something like that. Same diff. Sometimes you'll be here like this and he'll get a pummel. Pull my pummel in. And I do the same thing with my arm under his armpit. But I just find for a karate guy who's entering in from zero grips. So that, that Koshi Guruma it all works with the grips already established. If, if I'm out here, I don't have time for the grip. Just doing that shot put is so easy. Okay? Much easier than trying to get the underhook because people are more conscious of the underhook. If I do the shot put past his neck, Frederick, even if he ducks the punch, I still get the shot put. Okay? I'm still doing that shot put move. But if I try to get the armpit, he's not going to let me so easily. So I try to get the underhook and he'll fight the underhook as a natural thing. Okay, so there's this too, I think. I'll look it up later for you, Freddie. But the one underneath, where the arm is underneath the armpit, that works too. And we've done a similar one too, where it's like this, where he gets the underhook. They're like this. He's beat me to it. Now I'm not going to be able to do my hip throw or anything. So all I do is, look, I love this. I simply waki or shimete, close my waki, swing my arm over, and control my own arm. Now I do the spiral, but I'm squeezing my armpit. Bang, and I end up in that position. Okay, so that's valuable as well. My buddy Jordy taught me that one. That's a good technique. So we have three fun, yeah, koshi, that's, that means hips, yeah. Um, it also, it's another way to say the whole hip area. Uh, in my book, I talk about shingi tai, shin mind, primarily uh, soul size influences from India, gi technique, primarily the influences from China, and tai, body, the training concepts and influence is from Japan. And Japan, above all other countries, placed primary emphasis on the hips and the legs. And that's what they talk about. They'll say there's a saying in Japanese, koshi tsui this now. Koshi tsui means someone who's well trained in the hips and the power areas of the body. Okay, so we have there three super simple but very effective takedowns. We'll review them. Then we're just going to go and visit the ground on the ground for top control. There's a lot of positions, but the main thing I want you to think about is controlling from the side. Belly button to belly button, not chest to chest. For a karate guy, go belly to belly. It's really valuable. And think belly button to belly button because that puts your center on his center. Sometimes you can go too far over. Okay? Don't go too far over. Sometimes you go too far back. By having your belly button on his belly button, it centers your weight really well. Okay? The second one is the knee ride. And there are a number of knee rides. There's low knee ride, high knee ride, solar plexus knee ride floating rib near right, all that sort of stuff. But they're all very good for controlling someone and getting the heck out of dodge if you really need to. Okay, and the third one is the mount position, which everyone knows is very, obviously a very strong position, but it can be very dangerous against someone who knows what to do. And the reason is, if they know how to get out of uh, the mount, you can end up in a very compromised position. If they know, so just watching here, I'll show you what happens if I want to get out of side control, if I want to get out of knee ride, and if I want to get out of mount. Okay, so when I get out of side control and knee ride, essentially it's not such a bad position for the guy on top, okay? But for the mount, it can be a bad position for the guy on top. So watch it. So we're here. Can we see that? We'll come back a little bit to here. So, come on this side if you like. So Josh is in side control. Oh, there's lots of ways to get out, okay? But essentially what I'm going to do is create space. And he realizes I'm out, so he gets the heck out of there. I don't have control of him. He may want to try and reestablish. Okay, I'll come again. Or he may just want to go, I'm, going to, I'm out of here. He just gets up and runs away. So I don't have that same level of control of him unless I do a, a sweep, which is a good slow control. Come more around in my head. 
So, okay, so he has a good side control. So we have this one too, where I'm going to do the push pull. I'm going to push him and then pull him. Now it's different, but because that's a more advanced technique for the general populace. If you're on top, they get out, you're still safe. Okay, the second one is the knee ride. So come on this side so people can see what I'm doing. Just there. So there's lots of ways to get out of a knee ride. Okay, the one I like simply takes my arm between his leg and my hips. Just come move around them. So you can see my hand here. See that? This hand. I'm going to spiral it like a wave to the ground. So he has all that pressure on me. Oh. Okay, it's hard to talk because of the pressure. All I do is spiral and his knees off. Now I can pull his leg and start to push him down. Okay, but still, if I get his knee off and he wants to get out of there, he's still higher than me. So he still has a degree of control. So I spiral, he gets out of there, boom. He still has places he can go. Okay, so those two are quite safe when you escape. But when someone has you in mount, or when you have someone in mount, uh, it's not necessarily the best place to be. So now Josh has me, he's on top, here like that. Okay, all I'm going to do is control and bridge, finish here. Now he was on top, now he's on bottom. And with the guard, it's not as bad. But in a street situation, I'm just going to rail in on Just start throwing punches. Punches. But in the meantime, get the leg out of the way. And see, he's gone from being on top to being on the bottom. So there's one drill I want to show you. And that drill can be done as a single person here. Watch. I go from here to here. To here to here. One. Two. Three. So that drill allows you to control much better the actual situation. So when I'm in mount, hit that way. Move back just so I'm in this position. So he, he has to get my hands on the ground, so he bumps me, gets my hands on the ground, he traps my arm, boom, and he bridges me off. Boom. Now I'm in trouble, okay? Go back. But if I have that drill that I just did, as he starts to turn to the side, he has no more. Come back. He bumps me. Hands go down. Captures my arm. That tells me which way he's going. Captures my arm. As he bridges, I turn. To see that, even though he has my arm captured, I also still maintain top position. I put my hand under his shoulder, see that? And then I drop my elbow to the ground and his neck and jaw in the middle. So you often you get a really good choke there. Okay, so I'm here. He bumps me. My hands go down. He captures my arm, whether he captures it that way or whether he captures it that way, this arm holding the tricep, there like that. That's also good. It doesn't matter which way he traps my arm. The point is he's stopping me from posting. If he did that bridge without trapping my arm, I just put my arm out. It's not going to work. So he kills that post by trapping my arm. Trap my arm, and then he does it. Boom. And I'm gone. Okay? So to prevent that, I step into the side position. So as he traps, boom, traps my arm. Bridges, bridge, bridge me, get me off, throw me off. See, I just step into side position. Okay, so of the three primary top control positions on the ground, one where you're on his side, shiho kata, uh, shiho gatame in Japanese, or four, four corner, four angle control. Top that side, bottom that side, top that side, bottom this side. That's the first one. The other one is knee ride or hizagatame. You're pushing down with your knee 
I like them because it's a very low danger position if they counter. The mount, on the other hand, has a lot more possibilities where you can do. Okay, if you're on top, it's very hard for him to get out. But the danger is if he knows how to get out, you get caught underneath. It can be a little, little bit disturbing. So there we have it. We have three takedowns, three, hold, three ground positions. The key principle I want you to remember is push-pull in everything you do, or shihikikomi, or um, when on top, stay on top. You've got to stay on top, okay? Never go to the ground and finish underneath. If I go to the ground and I finish underneath, you can be sure there's a scramble going on. So we're, we're here. I throw the punch. Josh takes me down. Boom. I'm, I'm going to already start to scramble. Look, I'm getting my legs between him. I'm looking as he comes in towards me. Boom. I want to get up as quick as I can. I'm not going to let him settle his weight on me because Josh settles his weight on me. Look, now I've got a fight on my hand. Oh, man. And I said, now I'm going to really work hard to get out and try, you know, and it's really hard for me to get up. On the other hand, if he takes me down and I scramble straight away, don't let him get that top position. So as he comes in, boom, boom, I'm going to get the heck out of there. Boom, put the boot in on the way through if he's not a very nice person. Okay, so I don't want to get caught underneath. I want to avoid that at all costs. And let that be your mantra. Never get caught underneath. Until you're, you've been training Grappling for 10 years, don't get caught underneath, okay? Because Josh will attest, when you're on top of someone, it's a dream, right? Yes. But when you're on bottom, what happens? It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. It really is a nightmare. Because if they know what they're doing, it's just all horrid, horrid pressure. So we're going to recap to finish off. Three takedowns, three control positions. Let's go. So first one is bridging the gap, cutting in between from, uh, there we go, from range one, two, punch comes in, whoa, I want to get my head forward. I've got my wrong foot forward, so I'm going to keep pushing my head, bam, and I end up here, turn the circle, take him down, and I can go in the side, not chest to chest, but belly to belly, and I can practice that with no hands. Okay, to maintain pretty no, no fun, is it? It's no fun at all. Okay, so that's the first takedown. I'm here. I need to mirror. I didn't mirror then, but you can still make it work by stepping through as you put pressure on. But ideally, I want to step, mirror, pull the arm, push the head, push the sleep forward. Step, mirror, pull the arm, push the head, turn the circle. Okay, second one. I'm going to come in and collar tie, and then I'm going to st um, step my hips through. One, collar tie. Step my hip through. Let's do it this way so you can see my butt stick out. Bang. Oh, you see my butt sticking out there. Now, from there, I can simply pull, push, and throw him to the heavy ground. Or if he's my buddy, I'm simply going to kneel and take him down. Okay? That's the second takedown. That's like a wrestler's headlock throw. Third one is a wrestler's spiral. So I'm going to come from here, come in once again, or as he throws a punch, open here, push. As he pushes back in, look, my feet don't move. I leave my feet there. I simply spiral, 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 spiral. One important point that you have to remember, if when I come in, he drops his head to my chest. This isn't going to work anymore. So I need to try and be a little lower than him to make the spiral work well. So I come in here, bang, I get a little lower than him. See that? I'm lower than him now. So now when I spiral, I have complete control over what's going on. The three control positions on the ground. First one, side control. I'm going to move my belly down to his belly. Play with that. Okay, second one, knee ride. Come up to knee ride. 
They're my two favorite positions because you can get away from there if you need to. Third one, watch my foot. I simply take my foot over, mount. Let's be careful with mount. If you practice it, you've got to practice the side mount drill. Okay? So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was useful. How to bridge the gap from the normal stand-up ranges to inside takedowns in a very simple approach. Don't overthink it. The problem is a lot of grapplers move away from the stand-up stuff because it seems very difficult. But we, we understand the punches and kicks. So what's difficult for us is the grapple. Well, then for us, we need to simplify that. Concentrate on the principle of Oshihiki Komi, you know, pushing pull principle. Clear the range of the two and uh, the two and three, the punches and elbows, get the head safely on the chest. Or if you're not safely on the chest, get control of his head. And three, just work on those three throws the single leg, the headlock, and the spiral. They're so, so effective. And you can add them to your uh, arsenal very, very easily. Find a training partner that you can work safely with, and away you go. Um, if you get, I don't have a logbook here to show you, but if you have the logbook, great. Look, if you're not a member of the uh, Patreon family, please uh, come and have a look. I love that my Patreon family always attend here. Uh, it's really, really educational uh, to be able to, um, or, or rather it's really beneficial to me to be able to bring this information uh, to the platform and, and the Patreon family's kind contribution is what allows me to do it in these times and moving on as well. Um, if you're not a uh, member, hit, hit subscribe, hit the uh, notification bell down below. If you are a member, appreciate you coming back. Don't forget the one, two, leave a message and hit the like, and that all helps very, very much. Okay, Marco, good on you. Good to see your name there, man. Simple techniques, but you're very efficient, Marco. Um, it's very efficient. I can't tell you how efficient it is, provided you go slow. You have to start very slowly and build up build up, build up, and don't have a partner who tries to resist too much because if your partner starts to resist too much, injuries occur. What you need is a partner who just lets go, lets you go with the flow, okay? And there's, look, I understand there's a thousand trillion, quadzillion, billion, gazillion alternative techniques, but let's just start at these three, okay? Because there's other stuff that I could show you that you really love and, and will make a difference over time, but it takes time, okay? Thanks, Rochelle. Yeah, I hope you got something out of that. I like teaching me that it is like a well-written essay, introduction, the body, conclusion, revising. Good on you. Thanks, Tigre. Yep. Boss Graham Levy. Good to see you, man. Nice to see your name. Hope you enjoy that. Josh, it's an honor to be. Who care? <laughs> yeah, Josh was my fall guy today. He does a good job. Um, he's, he's only a young lad. How old are you, 18 or 19? 18. Yeah, he's 18 years old, so he's only been training with me a couple of years. But uh, I can tell you he's a bit of a phenom on the ground as well. Not just his stand-up stuff, but uh, he's orange, as an orange belt, he's as good as any orange belt in Kyogushin. But I can tell you, on the ground, he's as efficient as 99% of the Kyogushin world. So that's why it's important to cover all the possible ranges. Um, Sensei Claudio, us, thank you. Thanks, Rochelle. Yep. Frederick, us, thank you. Great. Look, thanks, everyone. I look forward to seeing you again on Friday. Lots going on. Uh, very exciting times to my... Uh, Patreon family, I love that you're so kind and uh, uh, thoughtful with your uh, regular contributions. And that is all really starting to pay off because now we're really getting the website together. I've got to do the, um, over the next few weeks, I'm going to do the, uh, um, what are they called? Zoom sessions for my Patreon family. So get ready for those two. I'll be in touch with everyone. So, us, look forward to seeing you soon. My tooth looks dark. It looks like I've got a tooth missing. Uh, uh, especially from that side. See that? So, yeah. If I go like that, it's not as bad. Anyway. Us, us Raj Kumar. Namaste. Shukriya. No, Dhanibat. Thank you. Um, I think that's correct. But anyway, thank you, everybody, and look forward to seeing you again real soon. Thanks, Josh. Us. us.